Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Getting Hammered. I'm your host, Mary Catherine Ham. I'm here with my co-host, Vic Mattis of the Washington Free Beacon. And uh, as it is uh, tax week, we thought we would uh, relieve some of your stress with another cocktail edition of Getting Hammered, where we actually get a little hammered. And as we are your morning show for any hour, we're going to do it in the morning because that's the kind of public servants that we are. Right, Vic? Start your morning right. <laughs> that's what we say. We're not ashamed. And then we're going to talk no. about some some important news issues. Actually, they're not going to be that important. I'm going to keep them pretty light today. I hope you have topics uh, that you're going to surprise me with, too. I don't know if you do. I, 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 I prep for some, but every now and then Mary Catherine will throw something and it's kind of exciting. It's, it's like, uh, how do I do on my feet? You know. He's very good on his feet. He, he's, <laughs> he's not he's not giving himself enough credit. Um, I live my entire life on my feet, so that's uh by the seat of my pants. Yeah, seat of my pants over here. Mary Catherine, uh, how are you as a tax person? You're pretty on it. Is that is that uh, your thing, or is it Steve's thing to Does be it on it? Seem like it would be my thing, Vic. So how's Steve with the taxes? <laughs> he's very good. Good. Uh, I've been blessed uh, with a husband who is. Very actively involved uh, in that. And it's my department yeah, as well. It, uh, I find it mystifying. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> for, uh, for many years, I, of course, had an accountant because I was yeah. like, I can't You do a million do things. I did a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. I'll, I'll do things in different states, which yes, makes it more yes. complicated mm -hmm. because every time you go to a different mm -hmm. state and work, mm -hmm. it can be a thing. Plus your multiple accounts and the Caymans and Switzerland. Yes, and obviously. Like and that. I have several yeah. identities. Yes. So, so it makes it. I also have, just to give you some insight on how fantastic the IRS is, so glad we've given them more money so they can fix problems like this promptly. Um, in 2012-ish or so, no, maybe, no, it was way earlier than that. Okay, the first incident was like 2002-ish. Mm -hmm. Someone was convicted in Georgia of having uh, partially uh, stolen my identity. Oh, now I didn't, yeah. I didn't pay any big price on the like credit front or yeah. nothing oh, was actually taken God. from me. Yeah, but somehow, at some point, some person uh -huh. filed for a refund that sh that should have been mine. Right. Oh, right. Used part of my identity to do that yeah. with the IRS. That's complicated. I don't, I don't think they got it. I think I got the refund. We got it sorted out. To this day, the IRS is unsure which me is me. And I'm like, y'all, I think we're going on like 15 to 20 yeah. years now of me having a special pin that they that they mail to me, of course, in the most secure way possible. Uh, can, Just drop it in my mailbox. Can I can I say this? Uh, I think they would be able to get it straight if they had more agents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like maybe if they had eighty thousand. Yeah, just eighty thousand more. By the yeah. by the way, oh wait, I have to tell another. Story. I'm going to tell a lot of stories Please. apparently. Please, and I haven't even had any alcohol yet. Uh, one time in suffering through my tax documents, yeah. and I did have an accountant doing it, but I had a specific question about a specific thing that was bugging me, and it looked weird and wrong the way the IRS was treating it. And it was a large amount of money. So I was like, well, I'll go to the helpline. You know, I was oh, this out. no. Oh, wow. So I go to the helpline yeah. and I just asked him, like, can I just please meet with someone about this? Because I'm better face to face at understanding these things and then I will be able to work it out. Yeah. And, uh, and they're like, nah, we don't do that. <laughs> and I was like, can I please meet with someone? Yes, you can actually make arrangements like three months in advance to go to this barren office building in Loudoun County and, right. you know, with gray dividers everywhere and zero faces to greet you and get your little number and sit in a chair like you're in a John Malkovich film and and then wait to get called back and talk to somebody. Great. That's what I would love. I got time. Let's do that three months from now. Wow. So I make the appointment. I go to the thing. I wait in line with my little numbered ticket. And then they call me and I think this is fantastic. I'm getting my chance to just, all I want is peace of mind. I want to understand what's going on. I want to make sure I get it right. I go into one of the cubicles that is behind these very high dividers so you can't see anyone back there. And I sit down at a desk that has no one at it. And a person comes in and I think, oh great, this is the person who's yeah. going to walk me through this. And uh, nope, she picks up the phone receiver, dials the helpline and hands the phone to me. So that's your in-person help at the IRS. 
That literally is. just sitting in the line on the phone. That is amazing. That I could have been on at home. Did you have the number at home? Yeah. So the they, only difference they, is... They had me make an appointment to go to a building to have a person come and call the helpline for me. Again, if we had more agents, Mary Catherine. <laughs> I think that might have been... Yeah. Was that COVID era? Anyway, whatever. It, They're useless is the point. It, it, you know, it's Aside from those ones who whistle blew on Hunter Biden. Much appreciated, yes, guys. Yes, those guys did a lot of heavy lifting. <laughs> the... Uh, for me, the the big thing is uh, quarterly estimated taxes. It's a huge pain Ooh, in the state yes. of Virginia, and we don't have that part of when we get the checks, and we have to take that into account. If you don't do that, yeah, then uh, you could pay a big price at the end of the year, mm-hmm. and it, it takes a big dent if it's unexpected for federal, and a little bit for state, but uh, that's an annoyance. Uh, the other funny thing is it's always, for me, a testament to uh, how uh, organized many of my contributors are to the Weekend Beacon. As you know, right. I have many reviewers now. And the last month or so, several of them will just chime in. Am I supposed to get a 1099? Yeah. <laughs> Did I get that? Do, have I been paid? Yeah. Have I been paid? Is it you know? Is it below? Is it below me? The threshold, this and that. And and I'm like, well, you need well, you need to check. I don't have your records for you. I know but, it it does become very confusing. You, yeah, you should have received it, and if you didn't receive it, oh, well, you know, whatever. And then inevitably, you know, uh, accounting will be like, yeah, we mailed it out, but we can do it again. Oh, thank you, you know, just to get everybody on the same page. I'm that person. Yes, I was going to say, and, oh, Vic, and, uh, and her name was Mary Catherine yeah. Ham. <laughs> so as 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 Mary Catherine mentioned. Uh, and this was really, I think it was also Jennifer's idea, or she's the one to blame, I should say, mm-hmm. which is that uh, we're going to do a uh, tax-themed cocktail. And uh, Jennifer came up with one she found. I don't know where it's from because I was, oh, you're kidding me. She came up with it herself. <gasps> this Jennifer is came up with this, and it's called the Tax Season Ender. I love it. And it's interesting because I thought, okay, well, what's in it? And the tax season ender uh, has gin, sweet vermouth, here for it, and blue curacao. Okay, on the rocks. Shake it, and then pour it into martini glasses. I do not have the martini glasses. I find they do not transport well unless you have them in a nice, secure, very cushiony box. Right, and they're so precious, really. I feel like if there was a person who had a cushioned box, yes. like a pool yeah. shark, yes, would for yes. his cue, yes. For martini glasses, it would be you. I had a box. Yeah. Not for the martini glasses, but they were for gorgeous wine glasses, but I took out all the stuffing. Okay. So now it'd just be rolling around. It's yeah, a disaster. That won't work. So we're using these wonderful uh, glasses, I believe a gift from Josh Christensen, who is now at the New York Post. Okay. So I have my cocktail shaker, and I talk about this on the uh, all the time on the show. You can get two different kinds, you know, a sort of a cobbler or a Boston shaker. This is a cobbler because- the strainer is built in. It's very convenient. I always forget that's the difference. I learn this every time you say it, and then I well, promptly no, forget it's not it. That. Yeah. So uh, in the mix already, because you know, like most of these shows, they have everything mixed. Like the cooking show, it's in the oven the yeah. before, and the other one is just sitting there. You're like the Rachel Ray. Of, I am. Of cocktail I'm makers. like that. That's that. That's right. A little Evu action. Is it Evu? What else did she used to say? Evo. Evo. Is it Evu? <laughs> Bam! That was Emerald. Okay, and. Uh, the only thing I didn't have that Jennifer picked up was the blue curacao. You know, my wife had a boss once who insisted that it was called Caraco. And it's so obviously not because it's named after the island of Curacao and the ABC. Well, it also has an them. AO at the end, so that couldn't be yes, Caraco. Yes, I know. And, and it's got the deal underneath the sea. Yeah. On the other hand, she was her boss, so I was like, Let's roll oh, with it. Uh-huh. That's interesting. And it drove me nuts. Did you and later? Did you later get her a book? No, no I explained I, that it was Curacao and leave it on her desk so that she could one like day find my it. My Burton on the Water story. That's a for an earlier episode. That's a little callback That's for you. Yeah. No, so uh, fans. But, but blue Curacao, which it's you know from the islands, part of the Netherlands Antil- Antilles, right? It's Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao. So it's from Curacao. Um, the blue is just a dye. If you got actual curacao, it would be clear. It wouldn't. It oh, wouldn't really? look like. Yeah, the dye isn't clear. I find that. I think somebody. They've been. Li- I feel like the blue curacao has been lying to me my whole you life. You can smell. What does it smell like to you? And then, and then, and then I'll tell you where it's from. Where do they get it from? I know that smell, but I can't place it. Orange. Okay. So it's uh, it's it's from the Laraja. It's right? a very. It's a the, light orange. It's a light orange, but Laraja is a very bitter 
orange, so you know, people aren't really eating it, but the peel is pretty good for okay. aromatics, as they say. So we're going to take it half an ounce. So it is. I just wanted it to be a blue orange. I think that I it naturally in, comes from like I a Powerade it's... color orange. <laughs> You're thinking like Grand Marnier now. Yeah. Uh, this is, which is similar. Uh, so uh, for two glasses, uh, I had four ounces of gin, and okay. I think it's two ounces of sweet vermouth. I got a nice Italian sweet vermouth okay. from the Italian store. Now we and have a half ounce of the blue curacao. We have to wonder. Yes, is producer Jennifer making a delectable concoction for us, or, or is she just, or is she to, setting she us wants up? To see us how we react. Okay, yeah, we don't, we don't know ice. which one. Okay, you got to add the ice. She's like, well, I'll definitely make it blue. Now, so if they stick their tongues remember, out, remember this is supposed ridiculous. to be. Yes, that's right. This is supposed to be in martini glasses, so it's it's uh, no ice in the glasses, okay. right? Um, although I've seen some people back in the day have, like in the '90s, somebody was telling me drinking martinis with ice, uh, martinis on the rocks. No, weird. A skim of ice. Yeah, you know, I have had I have had bartenders ask me the on the rocks question about a martini before, and I'm like. Who who does that? Yes, I want to. I want a skim of ice. There are That's people the best. Who say, there are also, also people who say I like my Mar- Mar- Winston Churchill, but I like my martini extra dry. The amount of vermouth I have is I look at the bottle and I bow to it. Yes, it's called I'm an alcoholic. I'm just drinking gin. Just drinking. I'm gin. just drinking really cold gin. So here you go. Really cold gin is good. All right. With a with a twist, you know, like as if the little lemon. That'll do it. Okay. And I, oh, I do have lemon twist too. Yes. Um, something you can be a little less blue about this tax season. Look, uh, Jennifer, they... did you test this beforehand? Because let's look at this. I... It looks tropical. No, did you say no? Uh, it's great because I think you've just uh, reinvented scope. <laughs> I, I, I Will it taste like scope? I'm going to swear. You, should, I'm you shouldn't have said that before I try it. <laughs> look at that. That's here. Oh, you gotta add the twist. Okay, there. while you're adding the twist, let me let me tell the people. Oh, right. They did indeed end up uh, continuing to put off that Venmo rule. So if you got more than six hundred dollars in Venmo oh, con- right. transactions, you don't have to worry about that right now. Uh, presumably, Biden will go after l- the little people later. Uh, he found that to be an election year issue for him, so he won't be doing it. News you can use. <laughs> Here you go. I gave you what's called a rustic slice. It's okay. a little bit wide. I don't do the fancy twist, which is pretty good also. It I smells mean, that's good. Nice. I mean, for me, I generally drink uh, um, my martinis with olives, but but a twist is nice, particularly with more floral gins, mm-hmm. if you will. Hendrix, for example. Um, I like a Hendrix. That's my this always oh, So the, marti- the gin I used for this particular drink is uh, Bombay Sapphire. Okay. So a nice classic. Do you like Nolet? I do. Yeah. I do. And I met Nolet himself. What? Yeah. When I was doing uh, research for the vodka book on, wow. available on Amazon, and I shoveled a giant hunk of coal into Kettle One. That is so cool. Yes. Wow. And they had me do a taste test of uh, Kettle One and other, because um, they own that and they own Nolet gin, which is right. very perfumey. And, and of course, you know, the gin that I disliked was Grey Goose. And like, oh, shocking. You know, I mean, I don't know what they, but it was room temperature. But honestly, the Kettle One at room temperature was 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 was, was pretty good. But they do Nolet Gin and they do um, uh, Geneva, uh, which is Geneva, which is, uh, it's, it's like a gin, gin uh, All right. derivative. I like where this is gin. headed. Okay, so happy tax day. We hope our listeners uh, have gotten their taxes filed away or at least asked for an extension. Here, here. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Jennifer. Oh, how drunk am I going to get off of this? My goodness. You know, initially, I was almost loathing this episode that we had to drink at this hour. Now I'm like... Oh, One sip in, you're like, I'm ready to go. <laughs> is, yes. it, is it 10, 10 a.m. or is it 2 p.m.? It's, it's, uh, that is quite... I like how 2 p.m. is your late that's hour. Ex- no, that's like two hours beyond... That's two hours after it's acceptable. The rule, for me, mm-hmm. new. But sometimes it gets there a little bit early, 11.50. This is very. It's, but Don't it's funny let me take no, care of my children this afternoon. There's no cream de mint in it, but it has again. A, it looks like we're drinking scope, uh, but tastier than scope. <laughs> I don't mind scope itself. Okay, we actually have topics as well. Oh, do we? Yeah. Oh, I have one more story. Oh, about. please. Okay, please. Uh, just to to thank. Oh, you, me Jennifer. too. I had some. Thank other you, Jennifer, thoughts. for your creation. Thank you. Um, you really invented and- this. 
That's impressive. Okay. And Vic for making happy. Oh, you know what? It's the color of money. Blue? Blue is, oh, it's green. It's green. It's green, yeah. So it depends. I mean, it depends on, it's, okay. I don't think it depends. I think this, that's green. This is, this okay. Is, this is like, this is like the scope, mint burst <laughs> flavor. Okay. So I have to tell a story just to, just to give, look, people who listen to this show know yes. that I am not the most exacting, responsible, uh, uh, timely person. <laughs> and- uh, what? But I want to I want to tell a story about my birthday oh. that really I feel like I've turned a corner and not in a good way, Vic. Um, I went to give a speech in Pennsylvania, right? Battleground, Pennsylvania, up to Harrisburg. Lovely drive, yeah. beautiful mountains, giant American flags everywhere. Now, because I'm married to Steve, he insisted that I pack the night before and get on the road. <laughs> I love that. That's how. You know, that that's like an, almost an imposition to do that. Yeah, I was like, oh, come on. Get on the road at a reasonable hour. Mm-hmm. So I end up at the venue an hour and a half before the speech. This is good for me. This is extraordinary for me, actually. And uh, so then I have to uh, change and do my makeup. So I go to the, there's a big bathroom off the lobby. I go there to get all done up. By the time I'm all done up, I have still 45 minutes an hour before my speech to look at my notes, to get ready. Great. Good stuff. Yes. Not a problem. She works hard. I'm going to be so well prepared, yeah. which is weird. So I go to prepare. I go give the speech. The speech goes well. We have a good time. Immediately after the speech, I had been invited to be on Megan Kelly's show, which you guys can look up, uh, talking about a range of topics. And I was on with Bridget Fetisi, Fez- who also has a podcast. Oh, yes. Walkins, Welcome, and Dumpster Fire. She has two different ones. And Megan Kelly. We do the show for two hours. Okay? And then when I wrap that up, I think, oh, I am hungry. I'm going to go get myself some lunch. Yeah. So I go to my car, and I can't open it because I can't find my keys. So I'm like, it's okay. Don't freak out, Mary Catherine. Even if Steve has to come pick you up because you lost your keys, at least it's your birthday, so he won't be that upset about it. But like, I hate to you're using up that. I hate to use my shit. birthday, yeah, 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 my birthday cachet on this. So I go, I'm like, calm down. Let's just check the bathroom that you were in. I'm sure you just left them in the bathroom stall. That'd be that'd be a thing I would do. So I go back, nothing in there. Womp womp. Very sad. So while I'm in the bathroom, I'm like, let's unpack and see what we got here. And when I unpack. My computer bag is good to go. There's nothing in there. I go to my clothing bag, and I'm missing a pair of jeans. And I think, oh my gosh, you idiot. You changed and left your jeans with the keys. In the pocket. In the bathroom stall. Oh. And I was like, oh dear. So I go to the front desk, and I say, (laughs) go to the front desk. (laughs) Hi. Do you guys have anything turned in? And she goes, that was you? (laughs) I said, yeah, um, that's me. She goes to the back. She brings out not just jeans and keys, guys. She brings out a pair of tennis shoes, a pair of jeans, a tank top, a pair of sunglasses, you lo- and my keys. All those other articles of clothing were yours as well? Yes. You left. <laughs> I left everything. Yeah thing I was wearing yeah. when I walked into that bathroom in the bathroom and had no idea none and the woman who brings it out you should see me on, the, like, on YouTube I'm just shaking my head <laughs> the woman who brings it out is fast. like she was so deeply confused and I th- I said she seemed so relieved yeah just to have an explanation for there what happened here there is a woman here. walking around naked what they thought. I actually thought, you know, it's close to the eclipse. I thought maybe she thinks I got raptured in the bathroom oh, stall. Like whoosh, yeah. she's gone. Just like all of her stuff in a pile. You're you're like you're like Mrs. Doubtfire, you yeah. know, changing in the bathroom, going look, back and forth. I gotta say, look, if any of you guys have hacks for a forty something lady who has four children and whose brain does not quite connect in the ways that it might once have uh done, let me know. Maybe the hack is Adderall. Uh <laughs> Do you, I, am, I am considering that perhaps medication is the path for me. But that aside, you still pack like last minute pack versus the night before. Oh, yeah. 
But see, here's the thing: I'm I'm better on the fly. I'm better on the fly. You know what you like? You know, you're like you're like these women in the movies where they have to pack in the movies. Well, I gotta leave now, and then they just throw all the clothes into the suitcase, and suddenly, magically, they have everything. I do like so quickly they throw all the clothes. I do like the clothes to be in there orderly, though. So I can't do the just ripping them off of folding it. Everything gets in. I can't. That bothers me. Hangers, and they put it with the hangers in the suitcase. But see, this is the 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 weirdness of my brain is that it can't keep track of an entire outfit which I left in the bathroom stall, but it can do a speech I wrote. Before the speech, like yes. some of the well, jokes no, in you... the car as I was going to the speech, and then do two hours of national podcasting radio with Megan Kelly, it just can't do the keep track of your pants part. Generally, your system works. Well, Ish. it works in extraordinary circumstances and not ordinary ones. I think that's the... But, but, your, but, but your whole MO has always been extraordinary. Oh, thank so. you. Well... I like to think it's uh, a wee bit charming, or at least we hope so. <laughs> On the rare occasions that Steve will leave something where it doesn't belong because it's so out of character for him, mm-hmm. I do get concerned, which is how this woman must have felt when she found an entire outfit in the in the bathroom. Yeah, He'll leave a jacket somewhere, and I'm like, is he okay? <laughs> What's going totally on? Totally out of character. Yeah. Okay. That's my story. But shall we get on to the, uh, the, the, new, the news-ish it. topics? News-ish. Okay. So the news-ish topics for this slightly inebriated uh, edition of the show are people saying really stupid things. So we have to, of course, start with Kamala Harris. Uh, Speaking about the uh, NCAA Women's Basketball Championship, which was won, by the way, by the South Carolina women against the Iowa women, uh, whose star player is, of course, Caitlin Clark. Yeah. by the way, just as an aside. She can't do it all. She was right. amazing. She scored 30 points in that last game. Yeah. Can't do it all. Go just, Gamecocks. Just as an aside, uh, they there's a lot of uproar online about, like, should Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark talk this much trash? Is their sportsmanship good enough? Uh, who's the GOAT? Can Caitlin be the GOAT without winning the championship? Uh, is she going to survive in the WNBA? Blah, 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 blah. I would just like to say that uh, this is what being a sport that people pay attention to looks like. Yeah. Like these <laughs> these fights right. are yeah. exactly, right, exactly the fights yeah. Yeah. that people have about men's basketball. Yeah. So just like this is what it looks like. Suddenly. Right. And I would I also would like to say that women can trash talk. It's fine. Like are they my favorite players when they trash talk? No. But people who are really good at stuff are not always the nicest people ever. Oh, I mean, I you know, back in the day, and this links up nicely with Right. Our Kamala subject. Uh, Diana Taurasi. I used to, you know, she was a big star for uh, in, in college basketball. Um, I think she played for Gino Ariam. I think I could be completely wrong about this. Uh, unbearable, insufferable. They used to have commercials with her uh, on like ESPN. You, right. What was that song? I Am Extraordinary. You know that oh, one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's, you know, doing the whole thing. That sound effect does not help unless you see me in the video, which is like going like she's going like, get out of here. You know, uh, okay, with the arms. Uh, it's 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 normal. And you know what? Back then, I think they had brackets back then. Okay, so yes, let's go to Kamala because she has takes on this. Mm. Ooh, and it is a take. This is a, I had to check, guys, to make sure this was not an AI clip. I thought yeah. I'm being tricked. I'm yeah. being taken. Yeah. We're teasing the listeners here. Okay, here we go. Here's Kamala. Do you know? Oh, wait. She, I should go preface back. this. She's, she's being asked yeah. by Spectrum News, which is the sort uh, I know that in North, Carol- cable, North Carolina, cable it's the cable company. It's like Comcast. Um, so it, particularly in Tobacco Road, where people pay a lot of attention to basketball and know things about brackets, uh, yeah. she's, she's broadcasting she's this. Here she is answering a question about brackets. Do you know, okay, a bit of a history lesson. Do you know that women were not, the women's teams were not allowed to have brackets until 2022? Think about that and what that talk about progress, you know, better late than never, but progress and what that has done because of. What is she talking about? Okay. I want to, I want to. You want to, you want to dive in this? I want to this. Okay. Two things. One is the preface of. A bit of history. A bit of history. Okay, so she's prepped for this. Somebody told her, like, okay, a little bit. Of, they told her this. The other thing is, 
the, the phrase they were not allowed. Mm-mm. You cannot have a bracket until 20... to, into the Biden administration. Thank God for the Biden administration. I think that's another advancement we can yeah. directly Women's tie brackets. to Kamala. I, I don't know how her husband filled out a bracket and posted it on Twitter before that, which he also, did. A hundred percent. There's just been a tournament for women for a long time. Obama used to famous member. He did his brackets for men and women. Oh wait, how? Because I'm told they had no brackets. All right, let's let's go on. Just talk about progress. Of course, when you know I had a bracket, I'm. It's not broken completely, but I won't talk about my bracket. <laughs> that is a line, by the way, that is just like I'm told to say this. Yeah. Right. She's like, here's a fact about how brackets right. work. Mine is not broken completely. <laughs> That's a pretty good laugh, by the way, because it's pretty close to her laugh. Uh, if you're the uh, sports announcer, what do you do? This one's hard because I find... You could uh, embarrass her, but yes. it is absurd. Well, I find that when I am on with people who are... If I'm on TV with someone who happens to be deeply ignorant about something like it's just off the charts wrong yeah it's harder to correct that than it is like a misunderstanding of a fact because you have to embarrass that person yes that would be very embarrassing to say you know uh actually it was 1982 that women's tournament bracket started happening if i were how do you get 1982 and 2022 mixed up she got the two right she got the last number right which is two if I were if I if I were uh, a handler, mm-hmm. you know, only being able to survive on the job for another month because everyone, you know, she has a very high turnover, every, notoriously a terrible boss. But if I were there, I would say, okay, we spin this by saying, look, she misspoke. She was thinking of 2022 because of something else, but in fact, she meant 1982. She right. just got the year wrong. But in fact, she sounds so certain that oh, it happened under her watch. Very certain. Very certain. Okay, let's let's hear some more. So her bracket's not entirely broken. Right. She's been told to say that. Uh, about the bracket that someone else filled out for her. Here we go. But you know what? Just the, how we love we love March Madness. And what is she talking? We love about? the March Madness. And she's doing this weird dance. Thing yes, with yes, her shoulders yes, she while she's singing it. Yes, she's yes. like, I've told the normal people like the March Madness. Wow. And also the phrase "allowed to have brackets." What does that even mean? Yeah, does you that... can't create. You would go to jail. <laughs> If you if you drew it up and said, I want to see how far they advance, nope, nope, not allowed. Nope. Yeah, what does that mean? What does it even mean? What because does... does she mean the actual tournament? Or does she mean that like my I think husband, in her mind my husband would have to fill out my brackets for me? Is that oh. what she means? <laughs> yes, yes. Before the you know, the, the universal suffrage of right. brackets. After uh, for my for my birthday, I asked if I could have brackets, yeah. and Steve said, so, "No, you cannot. Yeah, no, you cannot ha- I am have in charge of you the can't brackets drive in this house. Either while, while we're at Nor it. can you have a credit card. No, uh, or vote. Uh, relatively speaking, it is true that men's and men's basketball obviously existed before women's. Right? right. I think the earliest bracket for men might be like 1939. Naismith 94. was indeed a man. So right. Okay. There was a problem Fine. from the beginning. I'll have. To, I have to tell you, people were making jokes. Obviously, everyone had a field day. I feel like. It should be more widespread than it is. I don't know why I haven't seen it as much uh, as I have. But uh, people were joking about comparing this to uh, Elaine in Seinfeld. Oh, yeah. And her line about war and peace and telling the Russian author, you know, actually, Tolstoy's original uh, title was War, What Is It Good For? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> a, little, you know? a little history lesson. Yeah, a little history lesson. But I, I two other things came to mind. One was uh, Fred Willard in Best in Show, and he's an uh-huh. announcer. They do the announcing. Right. Uh, and he's interviewing Bob Balaban's character, and they're talking about the the, the hotel, the the Mayflower, well, the Mayflower uh, kennel competition. Mm-hmm. And he says, "Yes, the Mayflower, you know, where the Columbus when he sailed in, you know." And and he goes, "No, no, that's not that's not right. The Mayflower, you know, Plymouth, in, in, yeah, yeah. In Massachusetts. No, no, no. It was the Nina, the Pinta, the Mayflower, you know. And just like wouldn't change. And he's like, well." Let the historians decide. Yeah, Fred yeah we'll leave that, that to them. And another one that came to my mind was uh, in the movie You've Got Mail. Mm-hmm. Tom Hanks's pre Meg Ryan girlfriend is Parker Posey. She's a pub. Oh. She's a publisher. Publisher. So she's in the business. By the way, I, she's in both those movies. She's great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. She's great. And uh, you know, she's in the business, and I can relate to this about knowing how to match authors with books, not being experts on the books because right. you can't read everything. 
but in Parker Posey's. And Vic does not. And you know me. Uh, and they were at a, and they're at this party, and uh, and and she meets, um, uh, uh, what's his name, Navasky, who is mm-hmm. uh, 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 Greg Kinnear's character. Okay. From you got me. And he's I a, love he's, that guy. He's great, and he plays a journalist from the Observer. And she compliments him because, oh, you wrote that um, uh, article in the Observer. Uh, about the Rosenbergs, Julius and Ethel Rosenberg. Oh, yeah. And he was so excited that she read it and she knows about it and she's interested and she's on a roll and things are going well. And then she says, you know, the thing that nobody realizes is just how young they were. And and Kinnear just looks at him like, hmm, and doesn't say anything. But I think likewise, they, the guy from Spectrum was like, no, you just got to let it roll. 2022. Okay. Let's hear the rest of the clip. And honestly, I just might play the whole thing all the way through again yeah. because it's so enjoyable. It's amazing. Even just now allowing the women to have brackets and what that does to encourage people to talk more about the women's teams, to watch them. Now they're being covered, you know, and, and this is the reality. People used to say, oh, women's sports, who's interested? Well, if you can't see it, you won't be. But when you see it, you realize, oh, I it's feel a work, about it's that. a work of art. It's I a work of art. I feel about that about all sports. I don't find hockey interesting until I see, see it. See it. You know, I, I think reading about baseball is not as interesting as watching it. It's, well, the uh, problem is yeah. that before 2022, people were stopping you from watching it. Okay. Probably the patriarchy. Okay. Not allowed. I'm just going to play the whole thing all the mm-hmm. way through because it's so fantastic. Here we go. Do you know, okay, a bit of a history lesson. Do you know that... Women were not, the women's teams were not allowed to have brackets until 2022. Think about that and what that talk about progress, you know, better late than never, but progress and what that has done. Because, of course, when, you know, I had a bracket, I'm, it's not broken completely, but I won't talk about my bracket. <laughs> But you know what, just how we love, we love March Madness and even just now allowing the women to have brackets and what that does to encourage people to talk more about the women's teams, to watch them. Now they're being covered, you know, and and this is the reality. People used to say, oh, women's sports, who's interested? Well, if you can't see it, you won't be. But when you see it, you realize, oh. Not one thing in there makes sense. This Not is, one thing. This is why Joe Biden is like, I have to make it to 86. I have to keep going. There is no other there choice. There is no other choice. Okay, so we've handled the Kamala brackets discussion. Yes. Is that the is that peak Kamala? Is that the best we're going to get? Because that is that is that is like a team catching fire in the middle of March. That that was an NC State level run to the Final Four. Yeah. From the ACC tournament. Yeah. Sadly, they didn't make it all the way, no. and the UConn men pulled, they beat, did. beat the crap Go out Big of Purdue. East. But that was an NC State level yeah. Cinderella run. It was of stupidity. The school bus thing that she talked about, the school buses, was also great. That was pretty good too. Yeah. And the space, space was great. I know brackets is the best though for me. For me, well, it's because you know what it is. It's the certitude. We need a bracket of her. Yeah, and which one gas. is the winner? Yeah, yes. yeah, a bracket. If I was allowed bracket. to have a bracket, I would if, make. But one. you're not, and not until recently. And I mean, that's the other the other thing. She says that uh, progress. You know, I know, and it's not until you watch these sports that you can have this. Is she also kind of suggesting that women's sports weren't on TV before 2022? Well, she's certainly suggesting she wasn't watching. <laughs> that's good. Whoops. Yeah. Up next in the bracket, I'm not allowed to have of stupid things that people are saying uh, on TV. We have the View. Oh. Oh. Rarely contested in this area, but Kamala does her best. Yeah. Um, we have a, a discussion among the View ladies about the eclipse. Now, just to give you an idea of how terrible this clip is, Justin Barragona, who is a left-leaning media reporter for the Daily Beast, who is often just solely slamming the right, mm-hmm. uh, says, uh, you know, she deserves it. She Sonny Hostin deserves the mockery she is getting for this clip. So it starts with Alyssa Farrah Griffin. And uh, I'm just going to let it play for a while. We'll, we'll see where it goes. People are having all sorts of conspiracies about the end of the world. And then I read online that the earthquake epicenter was actually at Bedminster in New Jersey. Right. Fun fact. I, so it originated with Trump. I have to say, I... First of all, like just like you can look up that fact and just assert it as a fact. Yeah. <laughs> I read online somewhere. All right, moving on. 
I mean, I have to say, um, Karen Dupich, our, our wonderful, oh one my of our gosh. wonderful makeup artist, when the earthquake was happening, she put her coat on and she was like, Jesus is coming. I'm out. I'm, I'm out. I'm leaving. We've got a solar eclipse. Uh, we've she got ran the earthquake. Down the she ran down the hallway. <laughs> the rapture then, is here. The rapture's here. And then also I learned that the cicadas are coming. Cicadas. Cicadas. Although I love For the, the first time <laughs> in cicadas, like cicada. no, no, no. hundred the cicadas She's are thinking, coming. She was this thinking is, of John Cicada. This is Sonny Hostin. Yes, the cicadas are coming, and they're bringing the the uh, the smooth jams, <laughs> yeah, the, the smooth pop hits of know, the eighties. Yes. Cica- yes, they only come out every seventeen years. The smooth pop hits your, of the eighties. Drink your cachaça while watching cicadas. The cicadas and the chades. They actually emerge at the same time. Okay. No, 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 no. Two different. No, two, no, well, they, this is what I read. Two, two different there's times. There's two different kinds of cicadas. Yes, two different times. Times are coming. The good cicadas but, and the bad. So no. for the first time in in many many years. No. And seven. So, every seventeen years this happens. Well, that's not what I read, but maybe <laughs> but, you know, maybe well, you know. But- there's a whole team of producers and researchers for this show. Yeah. No. Uh, and and so Sunny then gets a little bit defensive and she says, well, maybe you know better. Hmm. And obviously she doesn't think she knows better. And that's when Whoopi says, in a way, as in, yes. Maybe well, you know better. I, but in I a way. say all those, all those things together would maybe lead one to believe that, you know, either climate change exists that's more or something point. is really or going on. Is returning. Earthquakes are not at the mercy of climate change. It's underground. No. It, can't, I don't it, think it, it happens in, the and the, the eclipse, they've known about the eclipse coming because... I mean, he warned Ooh. Noah. He warned Noah. He warned Noah. Repent your ways. But yeah. look, thank you, Whoopi. Uh, because yeah, this I is, get it. This takes such a weird turn because Sonny Hostin is first engaging in the sort of rapture conspiracy yeah. theory, mm-hmm. which I would argue is sort of like a jokey normie thing to talk mm-hmm. about, right? It's not... People in media will create it, the idea that it's like, oh, everybody thinks they're going to be raptured. Now, there are some people who believed that on Monday. Sure. On, like one, on of the, Monday. one of the cities or towns uh, in the totality path was Nineveh. Nineveh, so yes. Like, oh, everyone's getting it. Some people believe that. But she takes a turn because I think she feels like she's in the bad kind of conspiracy territory, and then she takes a turn toward climate change. Yeah, I'll dump it which on them. Is, if anything, more nonsensical yeah. than the conspiracy theory she was right. just talking right. about. And she thinks she's being intellectual, but it's actually more stupid. Here we go. Eclipses happen, and they actually can say when these things are going to happen. So all these folks who are saying, you know, it's a sign from God. God doesn't give you warning. <laughs> okay? You think he gave people at the Tower of Babel warning? Oh, I'm about to jack y'all up? <laughs> No, God does stuff, and then you figure, oh, that's probably because I just, uh. you know, I mean, it's no. But the cicadas come, we have them every 17 years. There's some we get every 20 some odd years. And they just go under, and they come back up, what and now they there's two, they make they noise and they have sex. And, and, and sing. And this time, both types yeah. are coming. They have yeah, sex? Yes. They make, what, what's they the make no, new what's cicadas the noise with while gold? they're having sex? Oh, God. <laughs> well, in addition to the cicada sex, I think the fact that the earthquake and the, ecl- the eclipse specifically, it's really great to see the coverage on news. That was a person making a sane point, so we don't need to hear that. Um, yeah. She's trying to put a listen? bow on this. <laughs> that was, uh, that was Sarah. Um. So she's trying to put a bow yeah. on this whole insane segment. But the idea that the earthquake and the eclipse yeah. hint, are, hint. A, are a climate change yes. issue. By the way, the fact that she's these are twin conspiracies, the rapture idea, uh-huh. God's wrath idea, and the climate change idea go together in her mind actually is quite fitting because they are both religious ideas. Yes. No, absolutely. The there are religion, religionists, religion now. Yeah. and then there are secular religionists, absolutely. and this is their... This is what they Absolutely. adhere to. Absolutely, yeah, no. Uh, I think when you're on five days a week mm-hmm. on a show like this, after a while you just start rambling. That's my fear. That's my fear of this show, Mary Cat. That's why we only do it twice a week. That's but right. I just gonna so be that like, we can what get all of our facts talking? exactly right. Yeah, what is he right. talking about? Because she is making those, but she's just thinking. She's talking. You know, she's uh, whatever her thoughts are, just coming out of her mouth, right? She's just yeah. thinking out loud, and that's. What she's thinking. Uh, so it, it is, uh, yeah, the, the the idea that climate change has some effect on, I don't know, Earth's rotation and the moon's orbit around the Earth and the sun. By the way, this look, is- and I, 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 you know, first to admit, I'm not a science person, right? 
I went to SFS, a school of foreign service, which is safe from science. But I, I just don't <laughs> think that that one has anything to do with the other. I do appreciate Whoopi's knowledge of the cicadas and her reference to this, uh, the brood X is what yeah. she's talking about. Also, I think the, the cicada, I'm going to call them cicadas from yeah, now on. Sure. The cicadas, it's so sophisticated. Um, the cicadas are too big yeah. a news story anyway. Like, just yeah. calm down. Yeah. To me. To me, cicadas is the soundtrack of my entire childhood and teenagehood. Like it's just they were yes. everywhere all oh, yes. the time. That buzzing, buzzing noise. Yes. Absolutely. And, and so they just they minded their own business. They 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 don't they don't they don't go after you. I did you have know, it's not uh, like locusts, well, you know. To be just to be fair, now that I'm thinking about it, one time I was exiting my parents' house and uh cicadas, much like uh other bugs, can be attracted to light. Mm. And it was dusk or mm-hmm. evening, and I was leaving my parents' house. We have you exit out onto a little stoop and then there's about three steps down to the backyard. And I exited out on the stoop where the porch light is. And unbeknownst to me, there is a cicada in that area. And I step out onto the porch and scare the cicada, the cicada. <laughs> and the cicada, uh, being scared, flies away from the light and into my hair. Oh. Now, I don't know if you've ever had a screaming cicada the opposite of the sound of John Cicada by your ear flapping around in your hair. Uh, but I'm like sort of like trying to get out. And I I just made the, my my call was just leap off the porch. That was, I took, I took four steps and just oh bypassed them entirely and landed in the grass out. I actually, I landed on my feet. You landed on your I'm feet. I'm an athlete, Okay, Vic. yeah, it's okay. good, yeah. I have brackets. I would have rolled. Um, I laid it on my feet, and I think it did free itself as I was flying through the air. Well, you have long hair, yeah. lustrous hair, gets lost in there. You know that is not a not an issue for me. So uh, I have been yeah. I have been you know traumatized by a cicada yeah. at you some know, point. And, and the individually, they the, the sound that they make individually, it's like an electrical charge. It's, it's a like, lot, it's especially like, if it's right by your ear. Yeah, it's yeah, really quite something. All right, shall we do uh, some? You love to hear it. Oh. Was that Let's all my stupidity? Uh, I mean, that's a lot yeah, for you know two what? clips, the, guys. I, I will say one thing about the uh, cicada, cicada. Uh, <laughs> Kate and I have this ongoing thing with uh, J-I-C-A-M-A. How would you pronounce that? Hickama. Yes, that's what she said. <laughs> what about Jacama? Definitely it's not Jacama. Jacama. Jacama? Yikama? Jacama? No? Okay. <laughs> I didn't think so. Yeah. <laughs> I think if you leave a uh, jicama out for the cicadas, they will enjoy it. <laughs> it's like Christmas Eve. What was the John Cicada song? Was it All I Want Is To Feel This Way? Is that, isn't that him? Am I wrong? I'm not going to sing it for our listeners. No, no. I'm not going to do it. John, from John the 90s. Cicada. Yeah, let's hit, hold All on. I I'm going to look it up. Feel this way. No. Oh. Let's see. Let, let's look up John Cicada Greatest I'll hits. I'll sing it if I have more of this wonderful Listerine concoction. Oh, I was right. No. My my feeling was that song. Like, all I had was the tune. I was like, it's just another day without you. Oh, that's well. That's John Sakata. I was that's correct. John Cicada. That okay. is him. All right. <laughs> You're welcome for that rendition. Thank Brought you. to that was, you that was by great. this cocktail. Yes. Okay. You're gonna get we, people love these shows because know. you know they love to. Mm. <laughs> okay. You love to hear it. Look. We're going to have to change Fetterman to a new category because yeah. he, he you love to hear it's us so often that it doesn't even really count anymore because it's supposed to be counterintuitive. That's right. But I must give him props. Uh, Fetterman, this week, uh, in an interview with The Post, said squatters have no rights, adding that the issue was one he often dealt with when he was mayor of working class Braddock, Pennsylvania. How can you even pretend that this is anything other than you're just breaking the law? I am not woke, he said. Wow. <laughs> we tried to we always tried to push back against that, adding he'd been horrified by what he's read in the post's extensive coverage of the squatting issue. It's wild that if you go away on a long trip for 30 days and someone breaks into your home and suddenly they have rights, he said. This is crazy. Like if somebody stole your car and they held it for 30 days, then somehow you now have some rights? God bless this man. God bless this How man. How upset were people about those comments? I mean, we elected you. How could you do this to us? You got to imagine that yeah. the pro Hamas, 
protesters who yeah. almost certainly were like knocking doors for him in mm-hmm. Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. Are now like, what the heck is happening? He would be an interesting study in deterrence. He's got uh, how many more years? Four more years? Yeah. Well, he's. I'm interested in how often he continues to be protested in that way, right? Because yes. they, they've come after him at his home. Right. And Democrats all Undeterred. over the country. I believe the New York Times was reporting on how Democrats all over the country are having this problem. Yeah. Running into the pro-Hamas groups. Right. How often are they going to do it to him? Given that when they do it to him, he responds yeah. robustly. Yeah, no, it just it just it just galvanizes. Yeah, and he's almost more hang cemented. Hang a flag, hang yes. the Israel flag. It drives him nuts. Even so more. Yeah, it might be a little hint for uh, for some Democrats if he if he gets protested a little less. Yeah, that they should be. Yeah, going the opposite. Once way. they realize that he cannot be uh, broken, right, and, and bent. Yeah, that um, they'll go to somebody else and. I think the idea of wanting to egg a person on and protest them and they are defiant, that'll get you worked up. But after a while, I think you, after a while, I'd have to think you'd get kind of tired of it. Well, I think the woke. Because you know you're not having any impact on these this kind person, of folks. If that's your point. Yeah, they really subsist on yh- weakening people's knees. Yeah. That's that's what they want, right. right? And this is what I always it said would about. work on uh, Biden. Yeah. And well, this is what I always said about um, Joan Rivers. Is it Joan Rivers never gave an inch, yeah. right? I believe you should apologize in public if you're sorry for the thing you did because mm-hmm. it was actually bad. Mm-hmm. But if it's just nonsense and people are coming after you, as it was often with Joan Rivers, because she'd just tell some mildly offensive joke and everybody would freak out, she would just give them the middle finger and be like, I'm a comedian, yeah. get out of here, mm-hmm. right? Now, they don't know how to react to that because the next step is supposed to be a story about how Joan Rivers apologized. Right. And then the next step is supposed to be a story about how you don't accept her apology. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you don't get into the, the cycle, cycle you're actually much better off. Yeah. So I hope that's where Fetterman stays. That is. And it's also interesting that uh, the term woke is ba- backfiring now, right? Because I remember in the late 80s, the idea of uh, the, the term liberal, you know, was a bad word. Right. right. Dukakis... Michael Dukakis in 1988, when he ran against uh, George H. W. Bush, he was you know tagged as a liberal, and it was a you you didn't want to be known as that, let alone a progressive. And then the shift happened. Suddenly, not only people are proud to be liberals and identify as liberals, but they're also proud to be progressives. Right. And then all of a sudden, now we're seeing things like DEI, ESG, woke. Suddenly, there's a little bit more hesitation. I don't know if it's beginning to swing back. Well, I think this some of this I has hope. to do with the idea that. Uh, uh, Batya Unger Sargon has written about this in two books now, yeah. but that DEI and being woke and this whole academia charade that yeah. they put on, that's like cicadas, um, I was gonna say. is just a device whereby rich white people mm-hmm. and rich people of other colors, but anybody who currently has power gets to play this game where they're super virtuous and don't need to be taken out of power. But they can say point, point, point at everyone at else. Yeah, exactly. Like that that's the idea. Now yeah. I'm remembering that we missed one stupid story. Oh yeah. I've discussed how my uh my brain doesn't work. But first we're gonna do one more. Yeah. You love to hear it, because uh oh. then we'll we'll circle back with the stupidity. This one is for a federal judge who went after the DOJ. Oh right. This is surprising. This one is fun. This is US District Judge uh Ana Reyes who's an appointee of President Joe Biden. Yes. Uh, she went after the DOJ uh, last week for defying Republican subpoenas related to Hunter Biden. So these are subpoenas from Congress yeah. to get people in to discuss right. Hunter Biden's issues. Um, she points out that, hey, guys, uh, you have a criminal case against people who defied subpoenas yeah. from yep. Congress in the past. So how do you justify uh, not... Right. Answering this one. Ignoring. And they basically, DOJ is basically like, ah, we don't really have an answer. They're just like different. They're just different. Yeah, you can say that without getting into explain what the differences are. No, it's are. An outright. Well, their names are different. One of them is Peter Navarro. So yeah. you're so you're telling me that you have completely two different standards of justice, yeah. one which doesn't apply to the yeah. president's son. Yeah. And she like really went after She that. did. And unfortunately, we don't have video of that because ah, it's a federal you court. you probably have her statement. So Reyes says, there's a person in jail right now because you all brought a criminal lawsuit against him because he did not appear for a House subpoena. 
referring to the recent imprisonment of Peter Navarro, a former Trump aide advisor, for defying a subpoena from the January 6th Select Committee. And now you guys are flouting those subpoenas and you don't have to show up? I think it's quite rich. You guys pursue criminal investigations and put people in jail for not showing up, but then direct current executive branch employees to take the same approach. You all are making a bunch of arguments that you would never accept from another litigant. Ooh. Ooh. She's just pointing out something that's very common sense. But of yes. course, in our environment, it's like, what? I don't know what she's talking about. So the uh, hypocrisy continues. She also, she sounded stunned, reports Politico, when Gilligan, who's one of the DOJ lawyers, refused to commit to instructing the two subpoenaed lawyers to show up if the House dropped its objection to allowing government counsel to sit in the room, which is yeah. their... Uh, contention. They want somebody there with this, with these people. Uh, it would be a different situation, Gilligan said. I cannot answer that now. Are you kidding me? The judge responded. <laughs> oh, man. That's fantastic. I don't think the taxpayers want to fudge, fund a grudge match between the executive and the legislative. Bad cases make bad law. This is bad, bad case for both of you. Get her. Again. Get her, Honorius. Just, you know... It, Yes, she was appointed by Biden, but she's calling it as she sees it. Well, and this is what they don't want. They don't mm -hmm. actually want to observe the same standard no, of justice, which of is not. the problem. But you know, the problem is if Trump wins, he will weaponize the government. So Yeah, I know. Because only, only one side does that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you had one we... more thing. And one more stupid yes. thing. Yes. Uh, this is from our old friend. Uh, anybody who's a who's been reading the blogosphere from mm -hmm. way back will remember the name Amanda Marcotti. Mm, oh, okay. Writing for Salon. Wow. The headline is classic Salon. I mean, it really feels like a throwback. Men punching random women in NYC, a desperate last gasp of the male rage fueling MAGA. What, There's what's... so much going on here. So women are indeed uh, being punched in New York yeah. City. It's yeah, this is horrible. really awful. Yeah. Uh, just like sucker punched. Yeah. Um, and instead of attributing to that to like mm -hmm. the way that New York City is run, mm -hmm. what we're going to do is say that that's a misogynistic streak yeah. being expressed thanks to Trump animating it in the city of New York. You have that. You know, you, you need to constantly find ways to blame him for everything. And I get it. You can blame him on X number of things, particularly our rhetoric. But but this is a bit much. Yeah. That women, so, so she admits in the first two paragraphs, she has no idea how often this is happening, who's perpetrating it, um, where uh, women are being assaulted by men of different races and ages. We don't know whether it's connected or coordinated. Mm -hmm. However, what she does what know, she does know, is that MAGA is the problem. I have a question. Does she mention when these horrible incidents happen? Do, do the perpetrators all say this is MAGA country? Right. And then they try to put a noose in and, and they throw bleach. Right, right, right. Yeah. That is, of do course, that? A, uh, a reference to the totally made up assault on Jesse Smollett in yes. the city of Chicago, which is not, in fact, MAGA country. She says, these stories resonate because the nation is having a moment of increasingly unhinged male fury at women for daring to have lives that are centered around something other than catering to a man's every whim. Unleashed by Donald Trump and the MAGA movement. There's an upswell of loud male entitlement shouting at us from every corner. Then she starts to mention the men that embody this. First off, Jordan Peterson. Wow. Jordan Peterson wrote a book that said, make your bed, dudes. Yeah, right. Like, it's the way that people turn him into this yeah. highly yeah, controversial this, figure. Yeah. Uh, who else? Uh, ben Shapiro. Wow. Yeah. You know him. Mm -hmm. He's a real bully. Yeah. Really problematic. Yeah. Um, really, that's that's uh, that's all she's got the, on that. It's, um, it's, it's a bit of projecting going on there, I think. She has issues, obviously, in trying to tie it into what she wants it to be. Right. Uh, the other thing is, you know, people have crazy ideas all the time. Right. There are editors out there who are allowing this to be published. I'm just going to say that. But you can't allow a, a U.S. senator's piece to be published in the oh, that Times. Would, that's a problem. Hard, yeah, yeah, no, the words are violence. I remember... When Salon was serious. And many, many, many years ago, when I started out, I even wrote a couple pieces for them, right. believe it or not. And somehow that made it into my bio in the vodka book that I'd written for Salon. And I kind of think it's like the it's uh, a mark of shame now. editor or publicist thought, you know what, we should mention that to make it sure, like, oh, he's, you know, he writes for, you know, all sorts of quote unquote mainstream publications. And the, Salon, when they started, 
It was a very serious political uh, yeah, publication. Remember. They had so much money, they ran commercials on television. Wow, really? Yes. You'll have to look it up. I wonder if it's there. Um, fancy commercials. It's like crazy, but, you know, that was a different time, no, and here now, we are now. I I hesitate to agree at all with Amanda Marcotti, but I do think there is a there is an online tide of sure. but, a-hole misogynists, uh-huh, yes, yeah. um, who make insane arguments. Uh, in my experience, I've uh, I've taken fire from both ideological sides of similar, mm-hmm. um, yeah, similar tone on this uh, subject, but the idea that like physical assaults in New York City are driven by MAGA is as made up as Jesse Smollett. Yes, yeah. I was going to say yeah. that's one thing. Do you remember the Jesse Smollett news cycle? Yes, or as Dave Chappelle calls him, Jesse Smollett. Smollett. Yeah, every, every, everybody got in. You had yeah. to get in on it quick, including our Vice President Kamala Harris. Well, and anyone who said the rush to judgment, anyone who said this <laughs> doesn't sound that right, oh, plausible, was thrown under the bus. Yeah. Which, by the way, this doesn't sound that plausible because I am examining the facts of this case. Is yeah. what reporters are supposed to do, right. and they just declined. And, and, and Jussie took such great offense when the police asked for the cell phone. Because obviously that would reveal. And what's quite remarkable is I think to this day he refuses to admit that he hired those two Nigerian men. Yeah. And uh, the rest of us, of course, have moved on. But, uh, well, not us here getting him. No, never. <laughs> not on the really embarrassing no. ones. Yeah. School closings, Jesse, never letting go. No, no. The reckoning continues. All righty. Should okay. we close it out before I get too drunk? Yeah, okay. Well. Uh, first of all, thank you I'm again. MK Heller. Thank you. Thank, you can yes. follow me. And... <laughs> thank you. Uh, this that, that wraps up this episode of Getting Hammered. Uh, remember, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube, and you can follow me on Twitter at Victory and Amanis. And thank you again to Jennifer for coming up with this wonderful concoction uh, known as the Tax Season Ender. You know, if you changed it out, by the way, mm-hmm. from a sweet vermouth to a dry vermouth, and so it's gin dry vermouth and the blue curacao you would have what's called a sapphire martini okay and if you threw in a little oj i believe i believe it's called a blue moon but anyway neat there you go look at all this information we're learning i'm at mk hammer on twitter at mk hammer time on instagram you can find the show at getting hammered podcast on instagram or youtube and uh this has been a nebulous media podcast thank you for getting hammered responsibly i'm gonna go check the bathroom stall for any of my belongings thank you (laughs) 